It is the hope of an average civil servant to get to the level of retirement, either through age or having put in 35 years of meritorious service to the nation. This position may not be the same for the people in the academia. However, one notorious fact is that one day, anyone employed by the government or the private sector will retire. The attainment of this level makes one to be a senior citizen, commanding high level of respect among the people as a result of their long-standing service to the nation. People in this category are entitled to a monthly stipend stipulated by law as pension, as a way of giving the senior citizens a pride of place in the scheme of things due to the myriad of problems associated with the scheme. There have been several pension reforms in Nigeria. The core objective of one of the reforms is to ensure that smiles continue to stay on the faces of pensioners. In line with Section 30, Subsection 2A, the Pension Reform Act has amended the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PITAD, was established in 2013 as an agency of the federal government. To what extent has PITAD been an independent pension department for the public service of the Federation? How has it been able to perform its duties to pensioners? These and many more are some of the issues for discuss on this edition of Stepping Up. My guest is the Executive Secretary of PITAD, in person of Barrister Sharon Ikeazo. You will get to meet her after this break. My name is Kemi Fakeye, your host on this program. <laughs> We are reaching you from the office of the Executive Secretary of Pension Transition Arrangement Directorate in Abuja, talk about PTAD and the program is stepping up. Barrister Sharon Ikazo is the Executive Secretary of PTAD and she has 27 years post-graduation experience as a solicitor and advocate and has a vast knowledge and experience in the field of business development for foreign multinational companies, project management, banking administration, national and international liaison. Barista, you're welcome to Stepping Up. Thank you very much, Kim. Let's start by asking you who and who are entitled to pensions? Everyone who has worked for government is entitled to pensions, but I'll now specify and referred to PITAD. The pensions that we pay from PITAD are for those who retired before the 30th of June 2007. That's for the old pension scheme from the head of service. And these uh, pensions are divided into four departments. We handle the civil service pensions, the police pensions, the customs, immigration and prison service pensions, and the parastatals. Uh, pensions. Okay, can you tell us the differences between pension and gratuity? A gratuity is a lump sum that you pay when one retires and pensions is a monthly payment usually for life for retirees. Okay, is there any arrangement uh, for civil servants that are uh, retired under the contributory pensions in your scheme in any way? Okay, the civil servants under the contributory pension scheme, those are handled by PENCOM through their PFAs. But those who retired before 2007 are the ones we cater for under PITAD. Ours is uh, not the, pen, I mean the contributory pension. Ours is the old uh, defined benefit scheme, and which is uh, treasury funded. But PENCOM is contributory pensions. Okay, is there any way you and your organization and PENCOM, is there any way you're working together? Is there any differences between the two? Yes, we do work together. PENCOM is actually the regulator of the pension industry, just like you have NICOM as the regulator of the insurance uh, companies. So PENCOM is the one who licenses the pension fund administrators, the PFAs, to uh, pay pensions. And they regulate us as well. We do monthly... Uh, reports to PENCOM to make sure we're in line with the guidelines uh, setting up PITAD. So we work very closely with uh, PENCOM. 
Okay, the overall objective of OPITAD is to ensure that smiles continue to stay on the faces of pensioners. Yes. How far have you gone in ensuring this? We have gone very far. And I might as well add that it's a work in progress and I think we're achieving our core mandate and also putting smiles on our pensioners. OPITAD, in doing his job, has made sure that we've eliminated most of the fraud. Even the way we do verifications of pensioners, you will not see our pensioners on long queues waiting to be verified. We keep them in a conducive atmosphere where they're seated. We actually give them lunch. They're given water throughout the verification uh, process. Then also for sick pensioners, we actually have mobile verifications. We go to hospitals to verify our pensioners who cannot get to our verification centers. Roughly six, five, six months ago, you assumed duty. What was the situation? What did you meet on ground? To say the truth, what I met on ground, I wasn't very happy with it. We had a backlog of complaints, some two, three years, that were not uh, resolved. Then we had a lot of pensioners who had been verified in 2015 in two zones. And I came in October 2016, they had not been payrolled. So I now set out to make sure that when we verify, after the verification of pensioners, we do not wait a year again before we now put them on the payroll. But we have to go through what we call computations working closely with salaries and incomes and wages uh, commission to get the right uh, salaries for the computation of their pensions. So I now made sure that exercise was now, you know, speeded up. After coming in as well, one of the areas we went to was the Northeast to do their verification. As we speak now, we're working on the computation of their benefits so that we pay them on time. Then again, the issue of uh, staff handling of pensioners, I have made it clear to them we must treat our pensioners with dignity and empathy. And I'm glad to tell you that PITAD staff are now you know, treating our pensioners much better than before. Okay, what other innovation did you uh, bring up when you came into the organization to really ensure that the vision of PITAD which is to have a model organization for the delivery of innovative and sustainable pension services is achieved. Uh, when I came in, I looked at the structure of PITAD as I met it. They were not following the blueprint setting up PITAD. So I made sure I met with PENCOM and they gave me the blueprint. So I would now say we're following that clear blueprint setting up PITAD our governance structures are in place. Our policies are in place. So I would say it's work in progress. Okay, that PITAD is still work in progress. It's work in progress. PITAD will get there. Okay. We'll Have you made any attempt to ensure more dedicated and uh, transparent operational system in, uh, in the organization? Oh, yes. PITAD, the way it's structured now, we have zero tolerance for corruption. And we have partnered and worked closely with EFCC and ICPC. In fact, inside of PITAD, we have uh, ACTU, our anti-corruption uh, fraud unit, to protect our pensioners who have fallen prey to fraudsters most of the time. And the way we do our pension administration and payment, there's less human uh, interaction with the process. It's now e-payment platform directly to the pensioners. What is so uh, the total number of pensioners on your payroll under the defined benefit scheme? For now we have 230,000 and this might increase with the verifications we're doing and also we had gotten we have gotten uh, uh, we've gotten approval from the Ministry of Finance who is our supervising ministry to take on the pensions of 14 privatized government agencies like the Nigeria Airways, New Nigerian Newspapers, 
Delta Steel Company and all that. So at the same time, we're doing the verifications. The numbers of our pensioners will increase. The verification is still ongoing. How yes. many zones of the Federation have you visited? Pitard is divided into four pension departments, like I said earlier. The police pension, which has concluded their verifications. We have the civil service pension department that we are now doing the verification. So we have two more zones left for the civil service verification. For customs and immigration, they have concluded verification. Then the next major one we're meant to do is the verification for the parastatals, which is huge. You have over 250 government parastatals under the parastatals department. So we hope to conclude all verifications by end of 2017 so that we can have a verifiable database of pensioners. Data capturing of pensioners with health challenges or the deceased ones. How are you going about this? Okay, for pensioners who have health challenges, if they notify PITAD of the infirmity of their pensioner, we have a mobile uh, verification team that goes out to the homes of those who cannot walk. Those who are very ill, we go to hospitals as well with our biometrics uh, data capture equipment and capture them. Okay. Yes, then for the NOKs next of kin, they come to Pitat headquarters to get their verifications done as long as they have all the documentation they need for verification as the next of kin. Has Pitat been able to ascertain deficits in pension management and how do you intend to defer some of the debts? I think what you're saying, calling deficit, is what we call pension arrears. Yes, yes, yes we, we have the issue of the 33% pension arrears because you know when they increase salaries, when they review salaries and increase, pensions also have to be reviewed. So we have a backlog of this and this we have uh, presented to the National Assembly for the 2017 budget so that we can clear the backlog of arrears. From your experiences, you know, over time, from this verification exercise that you are doing, will you say that pensioners in Nigeria have really uh, had a great deal over time? A lot of them have been having incessant verifications, but yes, their complaints were not solved. They were never put on the, on the payroll. A lot have died before verification could get to them. So now with our prompt, response to our pensioner complaints. We're trying to make sure that what happened in the past, where pensioners were denied their pensions, suffered to do verifications will not happen again. So we're making it very conducive and very comfortable for our pensioners to access their pensions. That we actually say that pension payments should be a pleasure and not a pain. And that is what we're striving to do. As a message, pension payments should not be a pain, it should be a pleasure. We'll take a short break now. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. The program is still stepping up and uh, the Executive Secretary of PITAD, in person of Barrister Sharon Ikeazo, is on the seat today, stepping up on the program, telling, telling us what her organization is doing to ensure that Pension is a pleasure in Nigeria and not a pain. And uh, Barista, before we went on break, you ascertained the fact that your organization is taking steps to ensure that you put smiles on the faces of pensioners in Nigeria for them to, con to now start having a great deal. Mm -hmm. How much of this have you been able to do? Maybe in terms of payment of areas, in terms of settlement of uh, the nest of kin of the deceased. Okay, we tried to reach our pensioners once we get hold of the complaints here. I'll give you an example that a live case I had recently. It was in the pages of uh, the newspapers I read about an old man who was the principal secretary to the former premier of northern Nigeria that he hadn't received his pension in six years. I went out of my way, found the son's number, and called immediately. And he told me the old man was just coming out of hospital. He had had a stroke. The following day, I organized 
a mobile team to go all the way to Mina to verify him. After the verification, we got all his documents and all. We did the computation and we paid him within two months of that verification because our process has to go through the federal auditors. We just don't compute on our own. And I made it clear to my staff that time is of essence to most of these elderly, the ones. So the minute we hear of cases like that, we go out of our way to get to them quickly. There are cases whereby we were not able to get to them on mobile verifications. We've had cases where we get the, the old man or old woman would have died a day before. But uh, in cases where the pensioners have died, we have the next of kin who come to us and they have to come with the letters of administration, letters from their local government and other documents that are needed, computation sheets and all that. And we now compute and pay the next of kin the benefit that their late uh, father or mother ought to have uh, been paid. But our desire is to pay the pensioners while they're leaving and not to pay them after death. They must enjoy the fruits of their labor while they're alive. Yes. So we go out of our way to make sure we get to them. But in fact, we're driving ourselves very hard to make sure we get all the pensioners who are meant to be on our payroll verified and put them on the payroll. Do you have a, an active line or channel, you know, with pensioners where yes, complaints we, yes, are received and all that? We have a call center and we have a website as well. Okay, what about the, the uh, issuance of BVN, yes. term printing and all that, you know, are there any way this, it, it's all? Yes. The BVN is helping as well. And we partnered with the ICPC and the banks. We had a lot of uh, pensioners on our payroll that had accounts that had no BVN. So we've actually taken off 15,600 pensioners off our payroll. This we did in December of 2016. There hasn't been much of an outcry. So to us, that, uh, to us we'll consider those pensioners ghost pensioners. But the genuine pensioners who didn't have the BVN, once they get their BVN print out from their banks, we put them right back on the payroll. So these are measures we're putting in place to clean our database as well. What if those pensioners are not really ghost pensioners? Okay, that's what I said. Those, that's why I said for genuine pensioners, immediately you're taking off the payroll. Once you don't get the alert that month, you know something is wrong, you would call in. And when we call in, we ask for your name and your account number. We check our system. Once we see that your account has been flagged, that means you're not getting payments that month. We'll now let you know that it's because of your BVN. And we ask you to bring a printout. Usually when you do your PVN registration, you get a printout from the bank with your details. Once you send that to PITAD, we put you back on the payroll. Okay. If you have uh, done that and we've put them back on the payroll, but majority have not uh, come back in. Oh, yes. So that means something is fishy yes. somewhere. Something was going on. <laughs> OK. You are a lawyer, and uh, you've been in administration for some time. What are those things that, that, that are new you are bringing into the issue of pension administration? Whatever I do in Petard, I will have to work within the, yes. the laws, yes, the Pension, pension Reform Act. Then also, I'm an advocate for good governance. PITAD is a federal government agency. But the way I want PITAD to run, PITAD should run like a public sector organization, whereby a complaint comes to you. There must be a time frame in responding. We must do things differently. So we're training our staff as well to improve in their work ethics. Is there any plan to work with the head of service office and PENCOM to educate, enlighten civil servants to do the needful 
before they retire so that they don't wait till when they are out of office before they start you know maybe filling the necessary forms doing what is yes that, i mean that, yes i understand what you're saying the pre-retirement uh, pre uh, trainings yes. is key i have met with the head of service and pencom the three of us have met and we're working our modalities to have um, sensitization meetings, call it dialogues or workshops to educate people on both the contributory pension scheme and the defined uh, pension scheme. Okay. Is there any room for uh, liaising or collaborating with state governments, you know, on how to also uh, treat their pensioners at state levels? Well, I think the state governments are learning from PITAD. We just uh, closed the verification center in Benin and the Edo state government was involved. They were there on ground with us, seeing what we did and how we treated the pensioners. And they've actually asked us to come in and look at their own uh, pension uh, system. Okay, as long as you continue on this seat, you know, we know that one day many of us will be on the other side of the, of the table, so to say, what would be your appeal to uh, pensioners or people that are aspiring to enter into the face on how to really prepare for life after retirement? There must be some form of pre-retirement uh, uh, trainings or preparation for people after retirement. They could go into farming, they could go into other businesses to prepare them for old age. But at the same time, Nigeria ought to be a country where once you've put in your years of service, you retire. Your pension ought to be guaranteed. In fact, the pension, the, your pension is guaranteed by Section 173 of the Constitution. Now, it is now the administration of those pensions to make sure you get your due, your pension as at when due. That is the issue here. So that. So instead of asking pensioners to be preparing for life after service, it is us, the administrators of these pensions, that should make sure that we prepare and set the system right for them to get their pensions at the end of their service year. What's your uh, advice well, or appeal to people that are here expecting you for this verif verification exercise? Let them know that you'll soon get to their side. Yes. Because some of them, they have their complaints, which they are, they are ready to lay at your table. Yes. For our dear pensioners, especially those under the civil service pensions, we've just concluded uh, the south-south zone and the northeast zone. The next two zones left for the civil service uh, pensions is the southwest and north central. We hope to finish computation of the two zones that we just completed in two months. So hopefully by June, we should uh, be in the southwest and the north central for their verification. So they should be patient with us. We will get to them. We will get to them. Barrister Sharon Ikeazo, it's been nice talking to you on stepping up this week. Well, you've really ascertained the fact that pension payment in Nigeria should be a pleasure and not a pain. That is the take home. And we'll continue to tell people that, well, PTAD is at the forefront of ensuring this fact in Nigeria. Thank you very much for being our guest on the program. And viewers, we thank you very much for watching the program. Join us again. We shall bring you another guest on this platform. My name is Kemi Fakeye. Bye for now.